you know, the first followers, you know, sitting there still heavily under LSD in a Sunday feast, just overeating busily. One year later, this was one of the main preachers in Eskom. Two years later, he was a sannyasi. And let's face it, maybe five years down the line, he was a guru. You know, five years and you are your disciples. And you are supposed to ensure the spiritual purity of this movement for the next 10,000 years. You know. So, and the habituation is there. We never forget. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, you never forget the old taste. It just gets covered by a higher taste. But we know perfectly well what it means to be a demon, what it be hedonist, what it be a, you know, all kinds of things. You know, we know, we know how to live in this material world. But now we actually decided to be a devotee. So this amazing potency is explained in this purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda that Krishna can do things very quickly. He said it once, if you would all listen when I really say you can take over the whole world in 18 days. Krishna can arrange anything regarding removing demons, no problem. They are removing themselves, they are just getting ready for that. Imperceivably. People don't know that. You know that the uh, uh, American army is getting now upgrading in each single European country, stationing again, you know military presence, you know, bringing in the weaponry and the other thing. So just a little bit more. You know, it's like Maya playing a little bit. Doo -doo -doo. And then go, oh, that was a nice sound. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And then she enlarged the symphony until it's a whole concert and whole symphony of destruction. People saying, how could this happen? No, it was happening all the time. Just bit by bit, you know getting ready for the destruction. The demons always do that. They're always ready for destruction, you know, <clears throat> all the time. And sometimes they even want to stop it, but it's too late. It's just a mechanism which is just set in motion, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, the lying and cheating and amongst the politicians of such a simple nature that even common men on the street can easily detect that. The real thing is, never admit anything. That's the policy. You know, they say, but this politician, he has a five girlfriends and he did this and he did that. And no, I didn't. But there's photos, you were there. No, I wasn't. That's somebody who looks like me. You know. But he did that. It's your name here. No. Just lying. Keep on lying. That's all. Such a stubbornness. So but Matiya Neji takes his course, and so does the spreading of Krishna consciousness. So therefore, actually, Krishna is, this is one of his famous shlokas. He tells Arjuna, get up, prepare to fight and win glory. Conquer your enemies and enjoy a flourishing kingdom. They are already put to death by my arrangement, and you, Sadhya Sachin, can be but an instrument in the fight. And that's not easy. How do you become ins Krishna's instrument? Krishna is not using dirty, old, filthy, half-broken instruments. If we want to be some nice instrument in Krishna's workshop, well, that's the perfection of a devotee. Then he becomes a nice instrument. An instrument means noble on its own. In the ultimate sense, noble on its own. That's a level we can only meditate about. Because every day, willingly or unwillingly, we are putting so many conditions. <laughs> yeah, 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 I also have Krishna, I like this, not like that. And under these circumstances, not under these circumstances. And I have to look like that, and I have to be accepted like that. If they don't accept me, they can do it themselves. It's a classical sound of the condition so. Then do it yourself. So, and you will stop spreading Krishna consciousness because I am not cooperating. Really. I mean, any older devotee can confirm how many devotees are coming, going, passing through. 
uh, the word is sometimes used sword. I want to be too specific because it always gets more controversial. But, but uh, I remember one of my very prominent congressmen who was managing here. You know, I remember his servant. It was the last stage of his presence here. His servant. I found his servant standing in front of his door, and he said, "My spiritual master is like an atlas." He's holding up not only the whole Scandinavia, he's holding up the whole Iskon. Atlas is holding up. And he was like, everybody had to stop and end it, you know. Do you realize when things are really going bad? Everybody has this tormented face. I have to hold up the vision. Once with such a pathetic face, tormented and with high fever, I dashed into the office of the very same GBC and said, What will happen to Sanketan? It's going down. The books are going down. We are going down. And he just looked at me completely annoyed and he said, This movement is spread by the Marcel Project and the Mahaprabhu. And he kept on writing something. And I stood there like a pathetic character, you know, like something you can hang, hang the cloth on, you know, like a cloth hanger, we have any, you know. Now, yes, Krishna consciousness can be obstructed for a while, but ultimately, Krishna's plan is undefeatable. It's not, it's, just, it's going to happen. When Krishna wants something, it's going to happen. And then, uh, on this line, one devotee asked Prabhupada, but how is it that when Bhakti Vimal predicted everything and it's going to happen, he didn't do it? We know. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj did India. And some attempt to preach in the West was there. And Prabhupada had a really wonderful answer to that. He said, well, he couldn't have done that. Bhakti Vinantaku, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, they could have spread Krishna consciousness all over the world easily. But then what, we, what will we do? Then there will be not much to it be done for us. You see? So mercifully, they left us something to do. So we also have something to do. It's the same situation in Kurukshet. Krishna is God. You could just look at the, observe the armies and go in. They will be all finished in one second. All of them. He wants Arjuna to get the credit. And he wants Arjuna to do something. And Arjuna being glorified for the way he was following him and for the way he fought the battle and finally emerged victorious. Nothing comes easily in this world. Everything is struggled when you look at it. There's not one single person in this world who can say, well, I was just here and then I achieved this kind of fantastic thing. And everybody struggles. Even these big, big people who achieved all kinds of things, when you look in detail, they always struggled. They always faced opposition. You know, they always, and very often they got even killed down the road. So this is the nature of this material world. It's Durga. Dur means very difficult, and Ga means go. Very difficult. There is always an obstacle. But the more one surrenders to Krishna and becomes tool in his hands, that's the only way to overcome these obstacles. So this should be actually a real source of our meditation and a real source of our research. How do we actually obstruct Krishna? What could be done so I can a little bit diminish the resistance in me so I can transmit Krishna's potency more simply, clearly and efficiently? That takes training, that's struggle, and that's really, it's a personal challenge to each single sincere devotee who wants to make something meaningful in this life. To be meaningless, no problem. One can just tune in and go with the flow. You know, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. You see it every day. You know, here we go. They wake up in the morning, we go to the job. We pick up the kids from the kindergarten, we go home, every day the same circus, you know, 
Then we watch some TV, look some internet, punk, go to sleep. Prabhupada gives a really short summary study of this. He goes, the holy hard work, foaming the mouth, is described in Bhagavad Foaming. Hard work like a horse, hard working, foaming. In the evening, he comes home, I was a little piece of bread to eat. And then he thinks, well, it's not really the bliss of life, but I still have one point on the agenda tonight. You know, I can have a little sex. The Prabhupada becomes very, very graphical. He goes, and then sex life. And then he goes, pap, pap, pap. That's when the female ass is kicking on the face of the male ass. Somebody always works that way. And then, oh, okay, we go with that kick, little sex, then he falls over and sleeps. And the next morning, oh, I said, one cigarette, one coffee, little piece of bread, and again, the whole show again. You know, like this. Some people say, ah, oh, this is oversimplified. This man doesn't understand how to enjoy it. My sense gratification of such a subtle and such a sublime nature. Really, really. It all boils down to these basic things. And then one day it's over. And there are many, many old people who will tell you that. He said, they will tell you, that was it. That's it. Not much going on, isn't it? That's it. That was it. And the life is over. What actually really happened? What have I done? Yeah, you know, all the people who sing like this. But the devotees are prematurely old. They sing already in the beginning of life like this. You know, oh, why should I do this? Oh, you know, oh, the same thing again. Oh. Generally, the story of the devotee is very similar. They, they were 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, they were already singing. What's the use? Why? Why to get into this? Prabhupada said it's completely natural for the conditioned soul to be lazy. Because it's so uninspiring. But then they have to replace it with something spiritual. And that's where the fun comes in. To be part of Prabhupada's movement, to be part of uh, something, to make some difference, should not underestimate the value of the service. You know, Prabhupada gave us so much encouragement, even a simple service, washing a pot, picking up a flower, making flower arrangement, doing things. These are simple things we are doing, but they have a great spiritual value. And this is what you got in the presence of Srila Prabhupada. You felt so dignified and so sanctified. Now, so my Gurbara said, very purely in a lecture, Nothing spectacular, he said. We got the blessing to offer some incense to the Supreme Lord. I can offer incense to Krishna. It's not an ordinary thing to actually have access to the Supreme Personality of Godhead via the Parampara, via Shri Prabhupada. I can offer something. Because Krishna doesn't make himself accessible normally like that. No, no. Nobody can. So this is special. We are living very, very special lives. Well, we are trying to be connected to the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we should be careful. Yes, it can be that we become completely useless, but then somebody else will do it. Why not? Why not? Somebody sings it. Even this five letters of it. E S K C O N. It's just letters, you know. But we are supposed to give the meaning to these letters. Without actually the meaning. So this movement is a meaning. If I join this movement, I should have a meaning which should be more and more identified as the meaning of the movement. There's a purpose. People nowadays introduce all this kind of thing that I am my spiritual life, I don't have to have any meaning and any purpose. And mission, what mission? I'm just chanting, what's the problem? I... No, there's a, there's a meaning. Prabhupada gave us a purpose, meaning. And that's how our spiritual life is defined.
Otherwise, Kanishta Adhikari. Kanishta Adhikari is someone who is simply busy with this preservation of his own uh, spiritual status, whatever that may be. But that's when the Madhya Madhikari is somebody who knows that there is the other purpose. I have to become useful. I have to become useful for the purpose of the mission of the spiritual master. That's actually where the real bliss is becoming useful. To get more and more the conditions out of one's life, which are anyway meaningless. Whenever we put up a condition, I want to be great, there is always somebody greater. I want to be beautiful, there is always somebody more beautiful. I want to be more prominent, there is always somebody more prominent. There is always somebody who is more. So why to start even in that direction? And you will see Chaitanya Charitamita is full of these beautiful devotees, descriptions, who sometimes they do really spectacular service, you know. What is one of Selling, selling... Uh, Sridhar? Uh, yeah, Sridhar? Yeah, it's one of them. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, just selling banana leaves or whatever. <laughs> Crows everywhere. <coughs> It's like selling cups of water to people on the street. But then he was very serious in his service. He worshipped Ganga, he worshipped Lord Chaitanya, and so many beautiful devotees. And his service, above all, was 100% accepted. And that's the success. That we get accepted. There's some comments. This is about becoming a nice, <coughs> a nice instrument for Krishna. So, to the important point, could you like elaborate more? So, how are you saying? You know, you cannot be instrument. Let's say if you go to the negative way, you cannot be instrument for Krishna if you cannot control your senses, you cannot control your false ego. You are socially dependent on things which are not favorable to devotion or service. Uh, you keep the wrong association. I mean, this is a hard thing. And above all, you don't even understand what the mission is. What is the mission? Mission means something which remains. I will come, we will come and go, we just do only the contribution. But the mission is, that's what keeps on going. So the sound is to challenge us always. Do you think you are the last link in a parampara? You know, yeah. You always think like this, our Krishna consciousness, fine, here we are, yeah, oh, great, you know, oh, it's nice. It's ours. It's not ours. Nothing of this. Just wait us in a hotel, that's all. Nothing more to it. There'd be nothing left on his bodies with all this oh traumas and all this ah, ooh, ah, drama, drama. Prabhupada yeah. was really challenged to the world when he just came into his room in India and he had this big border icing in a most impossible place. He said, Prabhupada, I cannot do any service. I have this huge boil here. I said, No, you don't. No problem, but I really cannot do that service. I have this support person. No, you don't. And then uh, by three, four times, like this, the devotee walk out of the room and he said, it's just next day it dawned upon him that, of course, Prabhupada doesn't deny the existence of the boil, but he just doesn't relate to his absolute 100% bodily identification. Prabhupada sometimes was pretty straight. And by his own personal example, he showed, you know, how he drove his body beyond any any physical possibilities. Just, yes, he was not, Prabhupada tried to make arrangements to people here, the recuperation periods and things like that. But trying to spread Krishna consciousness after you got two, three heart attacks, trying to do that. 
I know these people who have some problems with heart, they get especially it's a deep impact in their lives. Because the heart is something which is a soul, you know, soul, super soul, and anybody going through a heart attack and says, I know this, these people have really remember that. They, they say it's a very specific pain connected to a huge amount of anxiety. Oh, I just went through this, yeah, okay. He could have dropped dead any day of his whole preaching career. That was actually his physical constitution. Especially as Chanya Kapani rightly points out, one of these things which guarantee kills you is traveling. Traveling is a good killer. And you don't travel when you are 70 years old. That you should be able to stabilize and chant and, you know. And, and the range of your external activities is getting sized down. Well, that's basically the Prabhupada started. So, I cannot imagine. And we shouldn't copy either. When you copy this cheaply, then there's one stage before you die, you can go completely mad. Because <laughs> <laughs> you get so agitated by the body that you know you get completely out of control. So we shouldn't risk that. We have to do the needful sometimes. Admit our defeat and, and do the best out of the situation. I think the best reading I ever done was when I was sick. <laughs> Especially having a particular nature, you know. As soon as there was an opportunity to do something, I was out there again, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I dashed into the office of my GBC and I said, I'm healthy again! I want to go and suck it up! He looked at me again cynically and said, and become a violent man. <laughs> He knew. Ah, uh, Sankirtan, it's okay. I want to distribute these books, but I also want to exercise my passion. <laughs> it has to come out somewhere. So run on the street and smack the Germans around. That's the real thing. <laughs> you know, so that was something like that also. So he really did put his finger there. There's all many points in how to become two for Krishna. That's an endless meditation. Ultimately, science. That's science. That's the real science. To serve Krishna with body, 100%. Mind, 100%. Words, 100%. And the worst is the desire, 100%. That's the devoted definition of oneness. Become one in desire. The Krishna. Krishna wants I do. Remember this lecture from previous GBC used to go get to become the yes man. Yes man. Krishna says, yes. Do that. Yes. This is his strength that he wanted to become a tool. And then you find so many of the body always present in so many uh, conditions. Yes, 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 you can do that, but not now. I like to. Every morning standing on a street before I just the good books. The town is too small. The weather is too bad. The people are too stupid. They are, too, they are too fat, and they are too thin, and there are too many women here, and there are too many men, and there are too many dogs, and, and the whole catalog, you know, immediately. Come out. But once you distribute one, two books, you realize, not all that. <coughs> and even it was not maybe that what you expected. 
Prabhupada said, at least we got our duty done. Yes. Purodhama Chandra said the same thing when he was going in banishment, which was an absolutely useless thing to do. Purodhama Chandra with Sita walking in a forest, so what? He managed the whole town, kingdom, and everything. For Kshatriya is such a thing to walk in a forest. You never find Kshatriya enjoying the forest unless he doesn't have a chance to kill something or something like that. Hunting, yeah. That's the forest walk for Kshatriya. You know, hey, hey, it's nice forest here, hey. <laughs> you don't know, find Kshatriya walking. Ah, that's what shooters do. Ah, the smell, oh, the sound. Ah, Kshatriya goes, yeah, yeah, I can see that it's nice smell and nice sound. Hey, you have to hunt something now. Uh, that's, you know. And the nice thing is, to become two for Krishna, the more we become two for Krishna, we actually become ourselves. That's a big mystery for people. If you don't tool, then what about me? Well, that's exactly where you find yourself. Because Krishna is a very expert tool maker and tool user. So he knows your bodily conditioning. He knows the varnas which condition you. He can use them very nicely. You know, we don't even know Varna. Most people think they are Brahmana or what oh, a joke. We don't know all Varna, but Krishna knows. Krishna knows perfectly well. I have, this is a type of work suitable for you. And this is how you could use your Varna. And that's how you can, and then becoming tool, and somebody, and everybody starts to become a tool, becomes a whole orchestra. Because Krishna is a supreme conductor. The example of orchestra, I grew up in that thing, so I can very much identify with that. There's one thing in orchestra which is absolutely required. It's a hundred percent discipline. They all have the paper in front of them, they read the notes, and above all, everybody is watching the conductor. Because they cannot hear what they are actually individually playing. When you have 120 people playing music, uh, you know, when you sit in it, you sit next to the drums, you hear only drums, or you hear trumpets, and you, just, <laughs> you don't listen to the whole sound. But the conductor, he can, he has the overview. So he goes, oh, you cool down, you come up. This, 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 and he goes, it's a perfect counting. Music is about counting, you know? Professional music is about total count. Total count, 100% count. And you have to listen, and you have to follow. Supreme Acharya. Conductors, they are really funny people. And grew up with the top conductors in Europe. Oh boy! There are those who are hated and there are those who are loved. I knew one man, he was. I, I, was, I never forgot it from my whole childhood. For me, he was like a, from another world. Small man! He was always very humbly calling and he said, What you don't say, that was his famous mantra. What you don't say. People were like, He's listening what I'm saying. Oh, people are spending their lives to that guy. And he was, first of all, top expert musician, and second of all, he had such a way to deal with people. He had 120 of these really eccentric musicians following him to the death. When he said, gentlemen, I guess it's common knowledge, it doesn't sound very good. I said, we will exercise three hours more. Nobody leaves here even to the toilet until we are finished. And he said it in such a nice way. This was a great idea. 